Starting today, the Gemara on Daf Tezayin and Medalef, about five lines from the top, where it says, Man Tane Midis, Rabbi Yazid ben Yaakovi. This is actually the answer, Omer Rav Huna. Rav Huna said, Man Tane Midis, Rabbi Yazid ben Yaakovi. This is where we stopped yesterday. So this Gemara, as I mentioned, Rashi says, is brought up over here, even though it's a subject that has nothing to do with Masech Yuma, but a pshat that we're giving, an answer that Rav Huna is giving in a contradiction <coughs> between two Mishnas, and he's saying that Masech Midis follows Rabbi Loza ben Yaakov's opinion. And he doesn't have a direct proof that that Mishnah is Rabbi Loza ben Yaakov, but he's going to prove from other Mishnahis of Masech Midis that they are Rabbi Loza ben Yaakov, and therefore we're going to say that if, this, if the rest of Masech Midis we find is Rabbi Loza ben Yaakov, so this Mishnah as well is probably Rabbi Loza ben Yaakov. It's a similar answer to what the Gemara said before on Daf Yudale, therefore it brings up this uh, kind of answer here. So now the Gemara is going to show where do we see that the Mishnah in Midas is Rabbi Loza ben Yaakov. And it's going to bring up a Mishnah here and then it's going to, the Gemara is going to discuss it and refute it and come back. And this, that's a discussion here to prove that the Mishnah of Midas is Rabbi Loza ben Yaakov. So the Tnan we learned in the Mishnah in Midas as follows. Ezra's Noshim, the Azara was divided into three different sections. One section of the Azara was called the Ezra's Noshim. It's not really part of the Azara, they added it later, and it's not, it doesn't have the Kedusha of the Azara of the Beis HaMikdosh. Another part of the Azara was the Ezra Sisral, the place that Yidin are allowed to walk to, and then the, in that Azara, there's the Ezra's Kainan, the place where only the Kainan are allowed to walk to. So the size of the Ezra's Noshim, how big was it? Its length was 135, Al Reichav Meya Shloishim Vachamish, and the width was also the same, 135, a square area of 135. And there were four chambers on the four corners. These four chambers were sort of four rooms, but uh, without any roofs on top of them, uh, like uh, open, exposed rooms in four corners. What did they do in these rooms? Dreimis Mizraches, the room on Dreimis Mizraches, he is a Lishka Sanazirim. This was the room which was dedicated for the Nezirim, on Nazir. Shesham Nezirim Mevashlin Es Shalmeyan. That's where they had to cook the meat of the carbon Shlomim that they brought. And what was done actually was they had to use the fire. Um Megalchen Saran. They would cut their hair when they brought the carbon. Um Meshalchen Tachas Adud. And they would throw the hair under the pot to cook the pot with this hair had to be in that fire. That was that room. Dedicated for the Nazirim. Mizrachis Finest, the room that's on Mizrachis Finest, he Yaisalishkas Ha'itzim. The Bach takes out the word dir. This was the room where they kept the wood. Shesham, Kainim Balimumin Aimdim, that's where the Kainim, which were Balimumin, would be there, would stand there. Umasliin Ba'itzim, and they would check for the worms in the wood that it should be fresh, good wood for the Mizbeach. Shekalaitz Yeshbe Telas, any wood that had any worm in it, Posselagabi Mizbeach, cannot be used for the Mizbeach. Tzvainis Maravis, the room in Tzvainis Maravis, he is a lishka This room was dedicated to the Mitzayrayim. Right? The Mitzayrayim, when they brought the Karbonis, so first of all the Mitzayrayim came to the base of Mikdash, he had to go to the Mikveh, and that room had a Mikveh in it for the Mitzayrayim, and also the Mitzayrayim had to be there, not just for the Karbonis to be brought, but they put the blood of the Karbonis on his ear, on his, on his, on his thumb, and on his, on his feet, so the, that's the room where the Mitzayrayim was. Maravis Dreimis, the fourth room on Maravis Dreimis, what was that room? Amar Abulazah ben Yaakov, so Abulazah ben Yaakov says, Shachachti ma'aisa mishameshes, I forgot what this room served, what the purpose was. So, what do we see here? Since Abulazah ben Yaakov is the one that concludes this Mishnah and says, I forgot what this room was about, so it seems like, who's the one speaking over here in this whole Mishnah? It's Abulazah ben Yaakov, and then he concludes and says, I forgot what this room was. That's the Gemara Zraya, that's Rabbi Lozav, that the Mishnah is the Stam Mishnah and Midas is Rabbi Lozav and Yaakov. Abishol, so Abishol said, I, I'll tell you what this room was. That was the room where they stored the wine for the Nesachim and the oil that was used for the Menachis and for the Menaira. And therefore this room was called the room of the oil. So we see that this Mishnah is Rabbi Lozav ben Yaakov. But the Gemara is still not 100% satisfied 
that this mission is Rabbi Lazar ben Yaakov, and the Gemara brings an additional raya. Because in this mission, it's not 100% clear. You just see it from the conclusion of Lazar ben Yaakov is speaking, so it seems like the whole mission is Rabbi Lazar ben Yaakov. But the Gemara is going to bring another Stam Mishnah, and in that Mishnah could only work according to Rabbi Lazar ben Yaakov's opinion. It's logical to say that the Mishnayis and Midis, the Stam Mishnah of Midis is Rabbi Lazar ben Yaakov. That Rabbi Lazar ben Yaakov, he... The Tanan, because we learned in another Mishnah as follows, Kol HaKesolim Shehoyu Shom All of the walls of the Har Abayis, Hoyu Gevoyin, were very tall. There was no limitation of how tall these walls could be. There's no, it, they, were, they were very, very tall. It doesn't say, Rashi says, Har right, But we don't know how tall they were. Some say it was 40 Amis high, some say even 100 Amis high, which is uh, 150 feet high. Very high, very tall walls. Chutz mi Kaisel Mizrahi, besides the wall that's on the Mizrach of the Harabayas, that it has to be much shorter, it has to be a low wall. Why? Shakayan has pada, the kain that is burning the Pada Aduma, where does he burn the Pada Aduma? Where was it done? Not in the base of Mikdash. Aymid Bahara Mishcha. He stands on the Hara Mishcha, which is Hara Zaisim. Umachavin Viroya Keneget Piskashalechal. And he has to face the Beis HaMikdosh, and he has to be able to see all the way into the Heichal of the Beis HaMikdosh, B'Sha'a Sazor Saddam, when he sprays the blood of this carbon Chattos, he has to spray it towards the Heichal, and he has to be able to see all the way into the Heichal. So it's a pretty far distance, but we learn out from the Pasuk, where it says, Vihizo El Noichach Penei Oyel Moed, Rashi brings this Pasuk. So from there you see that the Kayin stands all the way in Har mm-hmm. and he has to be able to see all the way through into the Beis HaMikdosh. Now the question is, how is that possible? You have the walls of the Harabais and it's blocking, doesn't it block his view? So the, the, the place where he stood on Har Azaisin was level, the same level as the Harabais. Right? But now you have the walls that are blocking, but you have the doorways, you have the Psachim, you have the, the doorway of the Harabais, and then you have the doorway of the Azara, and then the doorway of the Ulam into the Heichal. All these doors were parallel to each other. So if he's standing on the Har Azaisim, and if he's able to look straight through the doorways, he, he, he could be able to see straight into the Heichel. Maybe you have to have binoculars to be able to see it properly. Huh? It's not that far? Okay, very good. So I, was, I wasn't there, I can't tell you. So it's not that far. So you could see directly from Har Azaisim through all these doors that are parallel into the Heichel. But well, here's the question, and here's the, the subject that the Gemara is going to be discussing now. Is the Heichal on the same height as the place where he was standing on in Har Azaisim, that he could actually see straight through? And the Gemara will show us that the, the, uh, that the Beis HaMikdosh, and when you get to the place where the Heichal is, it was higher up, it was much higher up than where he was standing on, on Har Azaisim. If it was level, so then he could see straight through the doorways, the entrances to the Heichal. But the place in the Heichal, the Beis HaMikdosh, was higher up. So therefore he was obstructed, he couldn't, his view, view was obstructed, he couldn't see. Right? So this is based on two points, we'll learn the Gemara inside <coughs> in a moment. But this is based on two points. First of all, how high were the openings of the entrances of God, that you can look into for the Kayin to see? It was only 20 Amas high. That was the height. The walls, as we said, could be as they were very high walls. But the, the, the doorways were 20 Amas high. So the Kayin only has that space to look in the height of 20 Amas. How high was the level of the ground of the Beis Mikdosh that was higher than the place where the Kayin is standing in Har Azaisim? How much higher was it? So here the Gemara is going to say that there's a machlaikis about this. According to one opinion, the height of the ground of the Azara was 19 and a half Amas high. Higher than the place of the beginning of the Har Abayis and the place in Har Azaisim that the Kayin was standing. So if the Kayin looks through the door, he has a half an Amma of space where he's able to see in to the Heichel of the Beis HaMikdash. That's according to one opinion. According to another opinion, the, uh, the ground level of the, of the Har Abayis keeps on going higher and higher. When you come to the Beis HaMikdash, to the Heichel, it's actually 20 and a half Amis higher than the beginning of the Har Abayis and the level where the Kayin was standing on, on Har Azaisim. So if he's going to want to look through the entrance of the door, which is only 20 Amis high, he's not going to be able to see into the Heichel. Because this, the ground level of the Heichel was 20 and a half Amis above where the, the vision goes through the doorway of 20 Amis by the beginning of the Harabais, and it's a half Amis too high. 
His vision is obstructed. That's the point that the Gemara is going to make over here. And therefore, according to this opinion, you have to have the walls of the Mizrach very low, so because he can't look through the entrance, he has to look above the entrance, and therefore the wall has to be very low, so above the entrance he's able to see the Heicha, from the place where he's standing on Harazaisim. So the Gemara here is going to now make the Cheshbin of the height, of how the, what was the height of the ground level of the Beis HaMikdash. Let's see. So Tanan, we learned in the Mishnah, Kol HaPsachim, Shehoyusham, all of the doorways that there were over there from the Harabayis and the Azara and the Beis HaMikdash, Goivon Esrim Amma. Their height is 20 Amis, Vereichvon Eser Amis, and their width is 10 Amis. So that's as far as the height of these entrances are. Utnan, and we also learned as follows, as far as the space going from, starting from the beginning of the Harabayis, and we're going to go now all the way to the Heichal, and it's going to talk about each level, how it keeps on getting higher and higher. So Lufnim Mimenu, when you enter from the Harabayis, so after you come in from the wall of the Harabayis, what's inside the wall of the Harabayis? Seirig, there's a, there's a small little wall that was made from wooden twigs that's called a Seirig. The Chachamim were Masakin to build that wall over there. Inside this Seirig, there's more of a level of a Kedusha. Utnan, in another mission it says, Lufnim Imenu, then inside this Seirig, between the Seirig and the Azara, Hachel. There's an area that's called a Chel. How large was that area? Eser Amis, it was 10 Amis. Ushteim Esre Mailes Hoyusham, there were 12 steps over there going from the Chel to the Azara. Roim Maile Chatziyama, the height of each step is a half Ame, and Vishilcho Chatziyama, the depth of each step is also a half Ame. So, what do we see over here? We have 12 steps, and each step is a half Ame, so we have now an elevation of six Ames. That's the first elevation going from the beginning of Harabais. Then, Tesvav Mailis Oilois Mitoicha, from the Azara. Now, after you enter into the Azara, there are 15 steps that go between the two sections of the Azara, coming down from the Ezra Yisrael into the Ezra Nashim, there's 15 steps over there. So that's the second level of elevation going to the Beis HaMikdash. And again, the height of each step is a half Ame. Vishilcha chatziyama, and the depth of each step is in half a So if you have 15 steps and each one is a half a so you have seven and a half amas over here. So it's six amas and seven and a half amas, so we're at 13 and a half amas in going up from the beginning of the Harabayas. And then there's another Mishnah there, and this is all in Midis, and over there it can continue going up into the Beis HaMikdash, the Tananda Mishnah says, Bein ha'ulam v'lemizbeyach, between the ulam and the mizbeyach, there was a space of Chav Beis Amit, 22 Amis. V'shteim esre ma'ilis ha'yusham, there were 12 steps to go from the Azara into the ulam, the Beis HaMikdash itself, 12 steps. And again, Roi ma'ilis ha'yusham, the height of each step was a half ha'ame, v'shilcha ha'yusham, and the depth of each step was a half ha'ame. So this is another six Amis. You have 12 steps, each one's a half Amis, another six Amis. So we had before 13 and a half Amis of height. Add another six Amis, that's 19 and a half Amis from the beginning of the Harabayis till the height of where the Heichal is. So this actually works out perfectly. If the Kayin is standing at the Harazesim, which is at the height of Harabayis, and he looks through the entrance of the doors, which are 20 Amis high, he's able to see into the Heichel. He has a half an Amma of space where his eyes can look into the Heichel. So that works out. So there's no reason to have the walls of the Mizrach low for him to look above the entrance. No, he could look through the entrance. But then, Utnan, we learned in a Mishnah that says, Rabbi Lazar ben Yaakov, Rabbi Lazar ben Yaakov says, that it was actually an Amma higher. The Beis HaMikdash was one Amma higher. So it was 20 and a half Ammas high. So his vision was obstructed. He couldn't look into the Beis HaMikdash. Ma'ilo ha'isa sham, gevoya ama. Going from Ezra Sisral, where the Yidin are allowed to come into the Azara, to the place where the Kainim go, it was actually one ama higher. It was a step up, one ama. And v'ducha nasan ala, on that ama, there was a stage that was placed there. Uvoy sholish ma'ilis, shol chatsi chatsi ama. There were three steps to go up on this stage. A half ama each step. So, but that step, it was just like a stage, like a st- stage to go up on this uh, stage. 
and then you came down from this stage. This, this, the, this elevation of these three steps are not counted because it didn't, that didn't remain going up to the base of Mikdash. It was just like a stage that was placed there. But according to Rabbi Lazar ben Yaakov, Ezra's Kainim was one amma higher. So then what comes out? According to Rabbi Lazar ben Yaakov, the height of the base of Mikdash is 20 and a half amas higher than at the beginning of where the Harabais begins. So if the opening of the Harabais is only 20 Amis, your vision is obstructed. You can't see into the Heichel because it's a half Amis too high. So the Gemara now explains, If we're going to say that the Mishnah, the Stam Mishnah of Midas, that says that the Kain's vision is obstructed, then you have to make the walls on the Mizrach very low for the Kain to see. So if this is Rabbi Lazar ben Yaakov, it makes sense. This is why the, the opening that there is, is covered. His vision is obstructed because it's 20 and a half Amis high. But if the Mishnah follows Rabbanan's opinion, so what's the problem? Why can't he see through the opening? It's only 19 and a half Amis higher than the beginning of the Harabais. So he has a half Amis. He could look into the entrance to see the Heichel. Elo, lav, shma, no. So this is our proof that we see of Lazar, Rabbi Yezeb, and Yaakov, that the Stam Mishnah, Mesech, the Midis, that says that the wall has to be low enough for the Kain to see, is the opinion of Rabbi Yezeb and Yaakov. That's the Raya. But now, Rabbi Adabarave is going to try to refute this Raya. And the point that he's basically going to make is that the Mizbeach is standing <coughs> in the way. That might be the problem. The problem is not the height of the Beis HaMikdosh, but it's the Mizbeach that's standing in the way, and therefore the Mishnah is saying that the wall has to be very low, so you could look from above the wall, above the Mizbeach. So, the Gemara Rav Adabarav Omar. Yeah, let's see. So there's a few, there's two opinions about this, and that's what the Gemara is going to discuss now. So Rav Adabarav Omar, Rav Adabarav says, Homani, I can tell you, no, that Mishnah there is not Rabbi Yezeb Yaakov. I can tell you, Homani, you know what that is? Rabbi Yudihi. It's following Rabbi Yudihi's opinion. The Tanya, we learned in the Braise regarding exactly where the Mizbech was positioned. According to Rabbi Yehuda, the Mizbech was positioned right in front of the Ulam. It was blocking to, to, to see into the Ulam. So Rabbi Yehuda says, ha Mizbech memutze v'oymed be'emtza azara. The position of the Mizbech was right in the middle of the azara. Ushloishim ushtayim ames hayuloi. The Mizbech was a square of 32 ames. Eser Amos, ten Amos of the Mizbeach, Keneged Pischei Shalulam, was positioned right across the ten Amos of the entrance of the Heichel. Yud Aleph Amel Tzofen, and then eleven Amos of the Mizbeach was to the Tzofen of the Azara, Tzofen side of the Heichel. V'yud Amos, V'yud Aleph Amel Ledarim. And then there was uh, eleven Amos that was to the left side of the Azara. So Nimtza, it comes out, the Dorim side of the Azara, that is. Nimtzed comes out, Mizbeach Mechuvin. The Mizbeach was positioned right in the middle of the Azara against the Heichel. Keneget Heichel the Kaisalov. The 32 Amas of the, of the Mizbeach took up the exact space against the Heichel itself. The, how, how wide was the Heichel itself? 20 Amas wide. And the walls of the Heichel. How wide were the walls of the Heichel? Six Amas. So you have the six Amas on each side. To get, so that's 12. And the Heichel itself, which is 20, so that's 32 Amis for the width of the Heichel. And that's exactly where the Mizbech was positioned, right across those 32 Amis of the Heichel and its walls. So what do you see over here? According to Rabbi Yehuda, the Mizbech obstructed the vision that the Kayan has, standing in Harazesim, to look into the, to the, to the Beis HaMikdash. The Mizbech is right in front of the entrance of the Heichel. That's why you had to make the wall of the, of the Harabais and the Mizrach low enough for the Kayan to look above it. So it's not Rabbi Lezab and Yaakov's shitta. You could say that it's Rabbi Yehuda's shitta. <coughs> so now the Gemara says, no, nope, this can't be. The Gemara refutes this uh, this uh, suggestion of Rabbi Adabarav, and the Gemara says, no. If you're going to say, Midis, Rabbi Yehudahi, that the Mesech the Midis, it's going according to the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda, it can't be. Mizbeach ba'azare mi mishkachesle, according to the Mishnah, Mesech the Midis, was the Mizbeach positioned right in the center of the Azara? 
But Tanan, we learned in the Mishnah and Midis that it says that the Mizbech was moved over more to the Dodim side of the Azara. And the Mishnah there goes through the Cheshman of exactly how it was positioned. Kol Azara, Hoysa. So what was first of all the size of the entire Azara? The size of the Azara was Eirech, the length was Meya, Oshmainim, Visheva, 187. Al Reichav, and the width of the Azara was Meya, Vishleishim, Vachamish, 135. So first the Mishnah makes the Cheshbon in the length, which is not really relevant for us. The Cheshbon is Mena Mizrach Lamayrev, from the east to the west of the Azara. The length of it was Meya, of Vishmain and Vesheva, 187 Amis. So how do we get to the number of 187? There's the first area of the Azara where the Yidin can walk over there, which is Yud Aleph Amma, 11 Amis. Again, this does not include Ezra's Noshim. The Ezra's Noshim is not really part of the Azara. It, start, it starts from the Azara, and there's a, spa, a space, 11 Amis, where the Yidin are allowed to walk there, 11 Amis. Then there's the next 11 Amis, where the Kayanim can go, Yud Aleph Amma. Mizbeach, the Mizbeach itself, Shloishu Mishtayim. The width of the Mizbeach, the Mizbeach was a square, 32 Amis. Then, Beina Ulam Vla Mizbeach. In between the Ulam and the Mizbeach was Esrim Vishtayim, another 22 Amis. The HaHeichal, the entire Heichal, which includes the Ulam and the Heichal and the Kaidish Kedoshim and the walls, all of that was Kuf Amis, was 100 Amis. And then, the Yud Aleph Amis, Achayre Beis Akapayris. Behind the Kedish Kedoshim, between the Kedish Kedoshim and the wall of the Azara, and behind it was another 11 Amis. So together, this is 187 Amis. That's the length of the Azara. Now the Mishnah there says the width of the Azara, which is what's relevant for us to see exactly where the Mizbeach was positioned. Min Adarim the width of the Azara from Darim to Tzafen was Meya Ashloishim V'chamish, 135 Amis. Hakevesh and how? What's the cheshbon of 135 amos? Hakevesh v'hamizbeach, the length of the mizbeach together with the ramp was shishim ushtayim, was 62 amos. Okay, so we're starting from dotim, all the way from the wall on dotim. So the mizbeach was close, very close. We'll see soon. Not exactly by the wall, but it was very close to the wall on dotim. It was 62 amos there. Then min hamizbeach v'letabois. After the Mizbeach, there was a space to till the, where they had the rings, where the Shechita of the Behemoths were done. How much was that space? Ches Amis. Over there, there was eight Amis. Mokeim HaTabois. The area where all those rings were positioned to do the Shechita of the Karban is there on the Tzafen side of the Mizbeach. Esrim Va'arba. That was 24 Amis. And then the space between those rings to the tables. They used the tables to put the animals that they shechted in order to take off the hide and take out the parts to be able to burn it on the Mizbeach. So they had tables over there. So between the area of the rings and the tables was Arba, was uh, four Amis. Now the, the Mishnah here does not say the area of the tables itself, how wide that area was. Rashi says, because it says this in the Pasuk in Yecheskel, so the Mishnah skips it because it's obvious. And in the Yecheskel it says that the area of the tables itself was also four Amis. And then, Minashulchana is Linanosin, between the tables and the Nanosin. Nanosin were these short poles that they used to hang the animals on them in order to take off the hide. Arba, that was also four Amis. Then, Minhananosin, Lekaisel, between these small nanosin to the wall was the um, Lazada to the wall of the Azada was Ches Amis, was eight Amis. So now, if you made the whole cheshbon of what we read over here, it comes out that the, the width of the of the Azada was 135 Amis. So the cheshbon that we had over here was only of 110 Amis. We're missing t- uh, 25 Amis. If you add it up, you'll see we're missing 25 Amis. So the question is, where are those 25 Amis? So four Amis I mentioned was the width of the table that the Mishnah doesn't say. So we still have 21 Amis that the Mishnah does not account for. So the Mishnah concludes and says, Vehamaisar, the rest of the 21 Amis was Bain HaKevesh V'lekeshsel. Going back to the Dorim side, the Kevesh of the Mizbeach was not right next to the wall. There was a space of 10 and a half Amis over there. And also the space of these short poles themselves, which the Mishnah did not say. What's the space of these poles? Was also ten and a half Amis. That's, huh? 
No, before it said four Amis was between the tables and the poles, or maybe between the poles and the walls of the Azara, but the actual space of the, of the poles themselves, the Mishnah did not say. So now it says that it was ten and a half Amis. Okay, so that's the Cheshman of where the Mizbeach was. So the Mizbeach, according to this Cheshman that comes out, was not positioned right in the center of the Azara. If the Azara is 135 Amis wide, so then what would be the center point of the Azara? 67 and a half Amis. It's exactly the center of 135. And where, where was the Mizbeach positioned? It was not positioned right in the middle. Okay, so now the Gemara says, If you're going to say that the Mishnah is a the Midis, is Rabbi Yehuda, and the Mishnah is a Mishnah, the Midis, is Rabbi Yehuda, and the problem of why the Kayin can't see from where he's standing in Hara Zaysim into the base of Mikdash is because the Mizbeach is blocking. The Mizbeach is not blocking. Mizbeach, the Emtza Azara, mi Mishkachesle. Is the Mizbeach in the middle of the Azara? Haruba the Mizbeach, Bedarim Koy. Most of the Mizbeach comes out to be on the Dorim side. So Rashi over here makes the entire Cheshman exactly where the Mizbeach was. And the, the Cheshman comes out that the Mizbeach was sticky, was, was uh, really, the, what did we say before? What was the Mizbeach? 62 Amis, right? 62 Amis was the um, width of the Mizbeach itself. Right, and then, huh? With the yeah, together, together with the, the Kevish of the Mizbech was uh, 62 Amis. And then there's another 10 and a half Amis that there was between the wall and the Mizbech. So that's 72 and a half Amis for the Mizbech from Dorim side till where the Mizbech ends into the Azara is 72 and a half Amis. So what does that mean? As I said, the center point of the Azara is where? 67 Amis, uh, 67 and a half Amis. The Mizbeach was positioned on the Dorim side of the Azara and it ended at, at what point of the Azara? At 72 and a half Amis. <coughs> so if, if so, it comes out that was the, was the Mizbeach obstructing the wall of the Heichal? So the Chayre would seem like it was obstructing the wall of the, uh, of the it was obstru- obstructing, huh? Because the, again, the, the wall of the Heichal was exactly in the middle of the Azara. So where is the middle of the, of the wall, of the door, of the entrance? Again, the, the, the door. The door of the, of the Heichal. The door, the, the door of the Ulam was exactly in the middle. So the middle of the door of the Ulam is 67 and a half Amis in the middle of the Azara. And the Mizbeach went further. The Mizbeach went another 72 and a half Amis, which means that there was another five Amis that it extended and it did, it did obstruct, did, it, no, completely, because how wide was the door of the Ulam? It was only 10 Amis. Right? So, and this went into the other half of the opening of the Ulam, another five Amis. The, the center of the opening of the Ulam would be at the point of 67 and a half Amis. And this went in another five Amis, so the Chayre did obstruct it completely, even according to this opinion. So that's why Rashi makes a simple Cheshman and says that when we talk about the Mizbeach being 32 and a half Amis wide, or 32, not 32 and a half, 32 Amis wide, that's including the Yesoit, the foundation of the Mizbeach. So, but, but the Mizbeach, the foundation stuck out in Amma. Then you go up for uh, Amma, so then the Mizbeach went in Amma. And then you go up another, I don't remember exactly the amount, and there's, there's, there's a Seviv that goes around the Mizbeach, the Mizbeach went in another Amma. So really when you get to the higher part of the Mizbeach, the Mizbeach was only, was, was, went in on each side, on, bo- on all sides it went in. So really the width of the Mizbeach was 28 by 28 Amas, because it went in on all sides uh, Amma. So therefore, when you get to the height that's right against the opening of the Ulam, the Mizbeach is only 28 Amis wide. So you still have two Amis that you can see into the Heichal from where the Kayin is standing in Har Azaisim. The Mizbeach has moved over just enough that you have two Amis that you can see inside. According to Rabbi Yehuda's opinion that says that the Mizbeach was not positioned right in the middle of the Azara. So that's the point that the Gemara is making now. You can't say that the problem of the Kayin standing in Arazesim is that he, the Mizbeach is blocking him. The Mizbeach is not blocking because according to Rabbi Yehuda, it's positioned closer to Dorim. El Olav, so therefore the Gemara concludes. So we must say, as we said in the beginning, Shema Mino, Rabbi Yezeh, from here I see that this Mishnah goes according to Rabbi, the Mishnah Yisamidus goes according to Rabbi Yezab and Yaakov that says that the problem is that the elevation 
of the ground of the Beis Hamikdash is 20 and a half amas above the beginning of the Harabayis, and therefore your division of the Kayin is obstructed because the height of the opening is only 20 amas. Shmamina, this is our Raya that the Mishnah in, over there goes according to the Yaakov and Yaakov. Okay.